he was going to sit down on a podcast one time and he talked about it. he said um i don't want to i don't want to do an exhibition against floyd mayweather he said, I'm only doing real fights. And of course, I can't get up high in weight, but I'll fight him in a real fight at the weight that I'm at. I never want to see it again, ever in life. Father Tom is undefeated, y'all. The brother's 58 years old, and he looked it. Mike Tyson was gassed one minute into the fight. But um, uh, Jake Paul, I mean, as of right now, for what he's doing, it's good for what he's doing. But once he fights a real actual real fighter it's, it's gonna be bad floyd mayweather has reportedly extended a fresh fight offer to jake paul following paul's highly publicized bout with mike tyson floyd mayweather recently remarked on jake paul's boxing trajectory stating that paul will continue to shine as long as he faces youtubers or mma fighters but cautioned that stepping into the ring with a seasoned professional boxer would end poorly this critique comes as paul's career features bouts with non-traditional opponents raising questions about his readiness for elite competition mayweather's comment underscores a belief that paul's success relies on the novelty of his matchups rather than skill against experienced fighters. This statement has fueled ongoing discussions about whether Paul is ready to face a true boxing challenge. He's, he's selling it. He's selling it and he's making good money and he's he's entertaining. I like it. Is he, and Floyd, there are, there are many, many people who believe you're the most talented fighter ever, period. So whatever you say to this question, I think is, is important. Are you impressed? Does he have boxing ability or is he just an entertainer who has a lot of fans and can promote a fight and has fought lesser opponents or is he actually talented as he as long as he continues to fight mma guys and youtubers he's gonna he's gonna continue to look good and shine but once he fights a real fighter a, a real fighter that can really fight it's not gonna be it's not gonna be that good Jake Paul's call-out of Mike Tyson for a boxing match has sparked significant attention, especially following Floyd Mayweather's earlier remark. The Clash, an unconventional matchup, saw Paul edge out the legendary Tyson in an exhibition fight, raising eyebrows in the boxing community. Lennox Lewis, a former heavyweight champion and Tyson's rival in the 1990s, reflected on the surprising result. Lewis expressed pride in Tyson for stepping into the ring at an advanced age, emphasizing that his legacy remains untouched by this outcome. He pointed out that Tyson Tyson's impact on the sport far outweighs the significance of an exhibition result. Tyson, known for his dominance during the 1980s and 1990s, faced criticism for entering the fight against a much younger, less experienced opponent in Paul. However, his willingness to compete at this stage in his life highlighted his enduring passion for the sport. As discussions continue about Jake Paul's credibility as a professional boxer, Mayweather's assertion about Paul's ability to face true boxers resonates, especially in light of this surprising and controversial fight. I'm happy for Mike Tyson from the standpoint that um, he went to eight rounds. He didn't get knocked out. I'm happy for Mike Tyson because he got $20 million reportedly to Jake Paul's $40 million. I'm happy for Mike Tyson because he left with all his faculties in order. Um, he got to fight in front of his children who may have never seen him fight before. Um, and that crowd and that ovation and the love and adulation that was thrown in his direction um, when he was introduced was obviously special for him and it was special for the people who love him, including all the fight fans the world over, uh, because anybody that loved boxing absolutely positively loved watching Mike Tyson fight. When Logan Paul asked Jake Paul about the possibility of fighting Floyd Mayweather, Jake confidently declared that he would knock Mayweather out. This statement, while typical of Jake's self-assured personality, immediately drew attention for its audacity. Mayweather, an undefeated legend known for his impeccable defensive skills and strategic brilliance, stands as one of boxing's all-time greats. Logan, recognizing the absurdity of Jake's claim, laughed and dismissed it as ridiculous. This interaction between the brothers not only showcased Jake's penchant for bold declarations, but also highlighted their contrasting personalities. Logan, who himself had faced Mayweather in an exhibition bout in 2021, brought a more grounded perspective to the table. Having experienced firsthand Mayweather's technical prowess, Logan's laughter reflected his understanding of the challenge Jake would face. However, Jake's claim was not entirely without merit, in the sense that it mirrors his strategy of keeping his name in the headlines. By targeting big names in boxing, Jake continues to draw attention, blending the lines between entertainment and athletic ambition. Went totally so eight rounds with the greatest boxer of all time. What do you think happens if you fight Floyd Mayweather? I would knock him out. Bro. <laughs> 100%. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. You, you think because you lost a fight to Floyd Mayweather that you're better than me at boxing? You said I won the fight. 
I in person when I was watching it, I thought so. But then, yeah, watching it back, it's like okay, I had like a biased point of view, like sitting there in person. This is the first time I've heard you say that. After Jake Paul's fight with Mike Tyson, controversy arose regarding Tyson's unexpected loss. Addressing this in a post-fight interview, Jake dismissed the defeat's significance, stating, "No one cares about Mike Tyson losing this fight." This comment sparked mixed reactions, as many fans felt it was dismissive of Tyson's legendary career. However, Jake clarified his stance, explaining that the fight's entertainment value and the financial rewards Tyson received were far more important than the outcome. Jake's statement reflected his understanding of modern exhibition boxing. Can I ask you this Where's the million dollar outfit? Because I've never seen an outfit like that. It's crazy. It's in the locker room right now, but I think we're going to try and put it somewhere like to showcase it. But shout out to the shoe surgeon, Alec Monopoly and Pascal for all making it happen. 380 carats, over a million dollars. One last thing. I love my friend, like family. You love my yeah. family. He's bummed out. He wanted to win. He loves hey, he, bro, he's amazing. No one, no one cares about the loss for him. He got, you know, got to cement his legacy, make a bunch of money, and have fun doing it. You know, so that's that's all that matters. Jake, what's the biggest thing you took from the bike fight? The biggest learning lesson? Where the spectacle often outweighs the results. He framed the event as a celebration of Tyson's legacy rather than a contest with serious implications for his career. Some fans agreed with Jake, arguing that Tyson stepping into the ring at his age was a feat in itself, while others saw the comment as disrespectful. Jake's perspective also shed light on the evolving nature of boxing in the social media era, where personalities and entertainment drive viewership more than traditional athletic narratives. Jake Paul's approach during his fight with Mike Tyson became a significant topic of discussion. I just felt so mentally like focused and locked in there was like no nerves no adrenaline even though my body wasn't as good in shape because of my ankle sprain um i just mentally everything's slowing down in the ring i'm not getting as nervous and stuff like that so that was did really you notice good. it's 75 000 people watching did i get you at all how many people did i notice arena, it right? though honestly it's harder fighting in an arena because it's louder in the stadium, it's not that loud, so I liked it better. Are you gonna stay Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thank Jake. you. Yo, Jake. Among fans and commentators, throughout the match, Jake appeared hesitant to press the attack even when clear opportunities to dominate presented themselves. Observers noted moments where Jake seemed capable of gaining the upper hand but chose to hold back rather than capitalize on Tyson's vulnerabilities. This behavior stood out, especially since Tyson, while a legendary figure, is significantly older and less active compared to the younger Paul. Many interpreted Jake's cautious strategy as a deliberate choice to avoid overwhelming Tyson. Critics pointed out that Paul's restraint might have been influenced by the age difference and the respect Tyson commands within the boxing world. A decisive knockout by Jake might have alienated fans of Tyson and diminished the goodwill surrounding the event. By pulling his punches and adopting a measured pace, Jake was able to preserve the perception of Tyson's legendary stature while still showcasing his own abilities. This calculated approach reflected Jake Paul's understanding of his role as a celebrity boxer rather than a traditional competitor. The three Three biggest takeaways from Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. I'm still in disbelief this actually happened. Number one, what the f did we just watch? I'm speaking directly to Netflix's 280 million worldwide subscribers. Were any one of you entertained by this? For Jake, the fight was as much about maintaining his marketable brand as it was about securing a victory. His success in the boxing world relies heavily on his ability to balance spectacle with credibility, appealing to both fans who value entertainment and those who appreciate athletic skill. A dominant performance that humiliated Tyson could have risked alienating a large segment of the audience, many of whom tuned in solely to see Tyson in action. However, this strategy did not go without criticism. Skeptics argued that Jake's restraint diminished the competitive integrity of the match making it feel more like a performance than a genuine contest. Exhibition fights like these often walk a fine line between competition and entertainment, and Jake's cautious approach reinforced the perception that the event was staged more for spectacle than for sport. By choosing not to press his advantage, Jake avoided creating a definitive moment that would have underscored his legitimacy as a professional fighter. Was there a single moment in this fight where Jake Paul was in any form of trouble? The only punch Tyson landed was the slap yesterday. I mean, Mike looked old as hell. He was not throwing back. He looked like he was on stilts. I didn't see his knees bend at all. And the constant biting of the gloves? Could anyone tell me what that was all about? 
This balancing act between entertainment and competition remains a defining aspect of Jake Paul's boxing career. His strategy in the Tyson fight exemplifies the careful image management that has propelled his success. By refraining from a decisive finish, Jake not only preserved the goodwill generated by Tyson's participation, but also kept his own persona intact as a fighter who respects the sport's legends while remaining a central figure in the modern boxing scene. Ultimately, Jake Paul's approach to the Tyson fight highlighted his understanding of the broader implications of his matches. By treating the fight as part competition and part entertainment, he maintained his appeal to both casual viewers and die-hard boxing fans. Even if it came at the expense of competitive intensity, this duality, prioritizing brand over sport, continues to spark debate about his place in boxing's evolving landscape. The commentary said it was a tick he's done in many of his past fights, but I don't know if he's ever done it as much as he did tonight. The commentary even said, why isn't Jake teeing off on him right now? Because a lot of people don't want it to happen. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to see a 58-year-old man get hurt, but this is a fight. They should have at least told us it was going to be a glorified sparring session. I want a refund. Former champion Daniel Cormier added his voice to the chorus of reactions, suggesting that the Tyson-Paul fight might have been staged. He pointed to the lack of intensity and unusual pacing as evidence that the match was more of a scripted spectacle than a genuine sporting event. Cormier's observation reflects a broader skepticism surrounding exhibition fights, which often prioritize showmanship over competitive authenticity. You know, Jake Paul the boxer is much better than people want to give him credit for. But I don't know that this does anything for that because he fought a 58-year-old man. He fought a 58-year-old man to a decision. That 58-year-old man comes out on the other side looking pretty good, if you ask me. He looked like you would expect a 58-year-old man to look in a professional boxing match, to their credit. Cormier's critique resonated with fans who felt that the fight lacked the raw energy and unpredictability of traditional boxing matches. The carefully measured exchanges between Tyson and Paul led some to believe that the outcome had been predetermined. While Jake and his team denied these allegations, the speculation added another layer of controversy to the event. Cormier's comments underscore the challenge of balancing entertainment with authenticity in the growing trend of exhibition boxing. They actually fought. It did not look like either of them was taking anything off of their punches. It did not look like this thing was staged. They put 72,000 people in that arena. They put 72,000 people in that arena to watch that fight. That's a crazy number. Amid the backlash, Clint Russell offered a more nuanced perspective on the Tyson-Paul fight. In a widely shared tweet, Russell wrote, Major respect to Jake Paul. It's clear he didn't want to hurt Tyson. Easily could have ended that fight. Yes, it's sad. But honestly, it was beautiful to see Mike in there one last time. One last anticipatory build to Mike Tyson's fight. One more. But what if he, Russell's comment acknowledged the emotional and nostalgic aspects of the event. For many fans, seeing Tyson back in the ring was a moment of celebration, regardless of the fight's competitive quality. Quality. Russell's tweet captured the bittersweet nature of the match, blending respect for Tyson's enduring legacy with an understanding of the limitations imposed by his age. This perspective contrasted with the harsh criticism from other commentators, offering a reminder of the human stories behind the spectacle. Despite the event's entertainment value, many fans expressed disappointment with the Tyson-Paul fight. Promoted as a clash between a boxing legend and a rising star, the match failed to deliver on its promise of high-stakes drama. Critics argued that the lack of intensity and competitive competitive spirit undermined the credibility of both participants. For Tyson, the fight raised questions about whether returning to the ring was the right decision. While his legacy remains untarnished, some fans felt that the bout diminished the mystique surrounding his legendary career. For Jake, the fight reinforced doubts about his legitimacy as a boxer, as his cautious approach suggested a greater concern for optics than for proving himself against a formidable opponent. The mixed reception highlighted the challenges of satisfying both traditional boxing fans and the newer audience drawn to exhibition events. Okay, so last night was the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight. And let's just be honest, right? Who really thought this was actually going to be any good? I mean, the best punch landed was in the face-off, it wasn't even during the fight. And now everybody this morning is yelling about how dare they even put this on television. And I hear you, but like, let's be honest. It's not the worst thing that AT&T Stadium has put on television this year. 
This was always just a gimmick fight. I mean, the only good thing that actually came out of this fight is the women's fight before it. That was a fantastic fight. I mean, somebody got screwed in that one, but whatever. But now Jake Paul's out here chirping that he wants Canelo. This mismatch underscored the perception that Jake's success is built on carefully curated matchups rather than genuine skill. Mayweather's critique echoed throughout the boxing community, especially as Jake continues to position himself as a legitimate contender. While Jake has shown flashes of talent, his cautious performance against Tyson and his bold claim about defeating Mayweather suggests a calculated approach to maintaining his brand. Mayweather's insight adds weight to the ongoing debate about Jake's role in the sport and whether he is ready to face elite competition. He beat Mayweather. I mean, that was a that was a screw job and a half. And I mean, we knew exactly what was going to happen. Paul was going to win. Tyson was going to lose. And I think that's horrible. I think Mike Tyson never should have signed up for something he was rigged to lose. I mean, Iron Mike, one of the baddest, if not the baddest boxers ever to walk the planet. And he signed a contract just to get a payday. And look, I get what I'm going to say. He's going to get a lot of heat. But it notches him down to me. It, greatest of all time is not what I think he is anymore. I just, it, it really get, put, leaves a bad taste in my mouth. The fight between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul has captured the attention of millions, not just for the spectacle, but because of the historical context it holds. Mike Tyson, a boxing icon, brought decades of legacy into the ring, creating a massive draw for both hardcore boxing fans and casual viewers. Tyson's enduring reputation as a fierce competitor made this matchup one of the most historical events in modern exhibition boxing. Meanwhile, Jake Paul's strategic marketing genius ensured the fight's success, further establishing his reputation as a massive master of spectacle. The Tyson-Paul fight remains one of the most polarizing events in recent boxing history. For some, it was a groundbreaking moment that brought together a legend and a modern celebrity, creating a spectacle that bridged generations. For others, the allegations of scripting and the lack of authenticity tarnished what could have been a genuine celebration of Tyson's legacy. The fight highlighted the evolving nature of boxing, where traditional athletic values often clash with the demands of entertainment and marketing. Tyson's team emphasized that the event was epic due to Tyson's legacy in the sport of boxing. As one of the most dominant heavyweights in history, Tyson's presence alone elevated the match beyond a typical exhibition bout. Fans eagerly tuned in, not just to see the fight, but to witness another chapter in Tyson's storied career. For Jake Paul, aligning with a legend like Tyson was a calculated move that highlighted how cleverly Paul selects his opponents to amplify both financial and reputational rewards. Being a part of this historic event, it was the largest event in the history of boxing. Um, I think we can all agree, especially the purest boxing fans, that you know, Mike Tyson is the reason that this event is as big as it is. 21 years old, he made history in boxing. 58 years old, he's made history in boxing. And throughout his entire life, he's been the focal point and the living legend here of boxing. I mean, that doesn't take away anything from what Jake Paul has brought. But you need a dance partner, and there isn't one as big as Mike Tyson. We're very proud of, I think I can, on behalf of coach, uh, head coach Billy White, uh, Coach Raphael, that we're very proud of Mike's uh, his determination throughout camp. I mean, we all remember Mike Tyson, especially if you guys are our age. And of course, we've been with Billy 45 years. You remember him as the killer, the menace, and you get to see the pads and you see, you know, just how amazing he is. Um, we're very proud of him. On the Ariel Helwani show, the host delved into the public's reaction to the fight, acknowledging that many fans would have been thrilled to see Mike Tyson defeat Jake Paul. The statement captures the emotional investment fans had in the match, hoping to see the beloved Tyson recreate moments of his former dominance. For Tyson supporters, the fight was more than a spectacle. It was an opportunity for the iconic boxer to reaffirm his greatness, even in an exhibition setting. Helwani's discussion reflected the widespread sentiment that Tyson remained a hero to millions, regardless regardless of the fight's outcome. Tyson, despite his age, has always been a fan favorite, and many hoped for a glorious return to form. The allure of Tyson stepping into the ring again captured the imagination of fans worldwide. For many, it wasn't just about the fight itself, but the nostalgia it evoked. Memories of Tyson's prime when he was an unstoppable force. This emotional connection drove massive viewership as fans clung to the hope of seeing Tyson deliver one more iconic performance. He goes the distance, they'll say, oh, he sucks, or oh, he carried him, and more on that in a moment. The only result that I think people truly would have been happy with is a Mike Tyson knockout of Jake Paul. I think that's the only one that would have sufficed, and that wasn't happening. That really, there was, there was never really any doubt. He landed a couple punches early on, but there was never really a question as to whether or not that would happen. I think Jake carried him. I think... Um, Jake didn't want to knock him out. I'm not sure if he could have, but he definitely took his foot off the gas uh, last couple rounds, for sure. 
Um, and ultimately, I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, I, I predicted a, a Jake Paul decision. People just wanted to see Mike win, and that's the reason everyone watched that fight. This simple yet profound sentiment encapsulates the motivation behind the massive audience turnout. Fans weren't just watching a boxing match. They were rallying behind Tyson, cheering for a victory that would symbolize the resilience and timelessness of his legacy. The collective desire to see Tyson win added an emotional weight to the event that transcended the typical stakes of an exhibition bout. The fight transcended the usual stakes of an exhibition bout, as it carried the weight of Tyson. Tyson's legacy. Supporters viewed it as an opportunity to relive the magic of Tyson's prime, imagining that his legendary strength and skill could still shine through despite his age. The audience's emotional investment made the match more than just a spectacle. It became a collective rallying cry for nostalgia and hope. This emotional connection elevated the fight beyond its technical aspects. While critics questioned the legitimacy of the match, for many fans, the outcome mattered less than seeing Tyson in the ring again. Their desire for a Tyson victory underscored the undying respect and admiration he continues to command even decades after his peak i thought it would be a little bit more competitive to get to the decision but ultimately i'm okay with that i am surprised he didn't call out canelo afterwards or someone else i'm not suggesting that should be the fight or that he can beat him or anything like that but it seemed to be like that was the thing on his mind i am surprised that mike said he'll fight again and that maybe he'll fight logan although uh, i think he was kidding to be honest um and so yeah a spectacle uh, made for Netflix and uh, you know on a selfish note I know no one really cares about this and you know people want to say ah oh, you sold your soul this and that like man I'm a kid from Montreal who grew up watching Mike Tyson the controversy surrounding the fight took another turn when a Twitter user Azar Lone shared an alleged leaked script of the match the post stated the below script is getting viral on the internet by the name leaked script of Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul the existence of a script if true would confirm suspicions that the match was more of a staged performance than a genuine competition this revelation further fueled debates about the authenticity of the fight and whether it had been designed purely for entertainment purposes. If the script's validity is proven, it would bolster claims that the bout was engineered to benefit both fighters commercially while avoiding serious risks to their legacies. Tyson's pacing and apparent fatigue later in the match, along with Jake Paul's calculated moves, became focal points of scrutiny. For Tyson, a scripted fight would protect his legacy by preventing a one-sided defeat. For Jake, it allowed him to maintain his celebrity boxer persona while sharing the spotlight with a legendary name. This incident raises larger ethical concerns about exhibition boxing's role in sports. Critics argue that such scripting undermines boxing's integrity, reducing it to entertainment, while supporters claim that the spectacle is its own reward. The leaked script reportedly mirrored the events of the match, describing how Tyson would showcase his signature style in the first round before slowing down in subsequent rounds. This eerie similarity between the script and the actual fight led many to believe that the outcome was predetermined. For skeptics, this confirmed their belief that the fight was orchestrated to match maximize drama and maintain Jake Paul's image, all while preserving Tyson's dignity. These accusations raised questions about the ethics of exhibition boxing and the integrity of the participants. As soon as the bell went, Mike Tyson came out with that head movement pushing forward. Immediately he stalks forward with his signature bob and wave style. Now let me just stop right there. Bef even before I seen this script, that's exactly what was going to happen. Like what else would happen? Would Mike Tyson come out and start moving on his back foot and not bobbing and weaving his head like he always has done. Obviously, that's what he was going to do. Anyway, let's go on. Tyson leads with a few jabs. The jab is what you lead with, and yes, that's the punch that every fighter throws when the fight starts, so okay, but let's go with it. Paul's youth shows with his superior mobility. The concept of a scripted fight, especially one involving a legend like Mike Tyson, adds a layer of controversy to an already polarizing event. Critics argue that if the script is real, it undermines the credibility of both fighters and reduces the sport to a theatrical performance. For Jake Paul, whose career thrives on spectacle, such allegations could tarnish his efforts to be seen as a legitimate boxer. For Tyson, it risks overshadowing a legacy built on raw talent and unrelenting dominance. This controversy illustrates a growing tension in boxing. As exhibition fights grow more common, balancing entertainment value with authenticity has become a critical challenge. For many fans, boxing should remain a pure sport, free of scripted narratives. He's younger and he can move his feet around. So again, from round one, nothing surprised me so far. Connects with a quick one-two combination, timing appears slightly off. His punches a fraction slower than in his prime. 
Of course they are. So round one was pretty accurate. Another Twitter user, I Hold I Life, expressed frustration over the match's authenticity, stating, the Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul fight was the worst scripted fight I have ever seen. Way to sell your legacy, Mike. This harsh critique echoed the disappointment felt by many fans who expected a more genuine contest. For these viewers, the idea that Tyson, a boxing legend, might have participated in a scripted match was a betrayal of his storied career. The comment underscored the polarizing nature of the event and the challenges of balancing spectacle with authenticity. Floyd Mayweather addressed the ongoing debate about Jake Paul's credibility as a boxer. When asked whether he considered Jake a legitimate fighter or simply a YouTuber turned boxer, Mayweather gave a sharp response. He stated that Jake Paul could continue to steal money, referring to Jake's marketing prowess and ability to generate massive paydays through high-profile matchups. This pointed remark highlighted Mayweather's belief that Jake's success is rooted more in his promotional skills than his boxing ability. Mayweather elaborated, suggesting that Jake Paul sees boxing as a marketing and money-making endeavor rather than a serious athletic pursuit. This aligns with the criticism Jake often faces from boxing purists, who argue that his fights prioritize entertainment over genuine competition. For Mayweather, who built his legacy on both skill and promotion, Jake represents a new breed of fighter, one focused more on the business side of the sport. If Jake Paul is a YouTuber boxer, a real boxer, how do you feel like you get out of that bubble to make somebody a real boxer? I mean, what, what he's doing is, I mean, kind of cool. If he can if he can continue to steal money and, uh, <laughs> and they match him the way they match him, I can't knock his hustle. So if they can match him the way they, how they've been matching him, more, more power to him. That's it for today's video. Stay tuned until next time.